What's going on everybody? This is the Uncanny Omar. And the Astonishing Melanie. And today we're going to be doing overviews of some manga from Yen Press. So, please stay tuned. Thanks to the folks at Yen Press for sending us these review copies. I'm going to step in and help my husband because Penguin Gentleman caught my eye. So let me do an overview of it, please. Sure, go for it. This cover definitely intrigued me with the concept of Penguin Gentleman, but also I already fell in love with the artwork and the character designs. Has a slip cover on this oversized edition, nothing on the book itself. Let's see, got some silver writing on the spine. Let me tell you, the author of this book loves penguins. So much so, in fact, that there's not truly a narrative going on. Um, it's more of facts about each of the penguins and their human form. They're disguised as humans. Um, it doesn't explain why, and I don't need to know why. That's completely fine. And they are working at the watering hole, this restaurant bar. Um, here we go. Here are all the characters. I did find it interesting like to see the differences in penguins, I don't really know that much about penguins. And again, love the character designs. As you can see in these chapters, it, it's actually very educational, a lot of facts. Like look at chapter three, magnificent daily life, uh, the secret to swimming, how to walk with stumpy legs, uh, scientific names here for the penguins. We've got the ways of love, chapter four, penguin courtship. And because all of these things are different for different penguins in the areas they live in, they got to go, uh, the author has to go through every character, right? When they're penguins, it's awfully cute. I love the subtle highlighting. You've got the blue eyes, but there's also subtlety of blue around the uh, eyes themselves. I don't know if you could see it like this. Hey, Omar, zoom in on this part. There you go. But yes, the shading in their hair, besides the cutesy art as well, love these colors. And there are a lot of color pig pictures in this book. So I'm not really afraid of showing spoilers here because, like I said, there's not a narrative. There's, there's not a story going on. I mean, they have their own personalities and interact with each other while uh, discussing all these facts. But there are only five chapters. This is it. And of course, this is all you need, right? Unless there's like a ton more facts about penguins. So I recommend this manga if you are interested in the art style. Again, there is no story, but rather learning about penguins. Next up is the vampire in his pleasant companions. So this is a pretty interesting story about a vampire from America. His name is Albert. There he is right there in bat form. And he accidentally gets stuck in a freezer and sent over to Japan. Japan as a bat, not as a human being. And then over there, he meets this character named Akira. Akira is not a vampire. And so we learn through a series of events that Albert isn't really accepted by his family. When they find out that he's one of the undead, he comes home and his father's like, get the heck out of here. Nobody wants you. His own mother and brother turn against him. So he kind of becomes homeless. And all in volume one, this happens where he gets shipped over to Japan as a, like I said, a bat. And he only lets Akira know about his transformation into the vampire world. So Akira lets him drink out of his own blood and they become really close friends. Now in the beginning of this, I'm sorry, towards the end of volume one, somebody stabbed um, Albert and now it's, this whole volume is trying to find out who the killer is. So that's basically the premise of this particular volume. And this is all written by Narasi Konohara and it's all drawn by Marimo Ragawa. So it's a pretty interesting take on vampire, especially when the vampire is trying to figure out who tried to murder him and who this serial killer is that's out there killing people, innocent people. So he teams up with the detective and he, yes, he turns into a cute little bat. There's also a collection back here of, yeah, right here, prose of something that happened before Akira, or I'm sorry, Albert went over to Japan and that's collected in the traditional 
Western style of left to right. But the manga itself is collected in right to left. Uh, now this one retails for $13 and has 192 pages in it. And I would say this one here is probably older teen. Um, and probably teen, honestly. There's just a little bit of violence in here, especially what happens to poor Albert as a bat when the serial killer catches him later on. Alright, so this one here is a cute little manga called Overlord, the Undead King O. This one retails for $13 as well. And honestly, this one says it's older teen, but I think teens would be okay. Now, the original story here is by Kugane Marayuma. And the artwork here is by Sobin and Huami. And this is just a series of usually six to sometimes eight panel little short stories, sometimes four panel short stories uh, based around the world of Overlord. None of it is canon, which means that none of it is actually taking place in, in the real world of the uh, series Overlord. They're just characters that are featured in the world of Overlord in this really weird, funny, quirky uh, appearances in this particular manga. Some of them are silly. Actually, most of them are really silly, and that's pretty much what all this is. It's just hijinks about characters that appear throughout the Overlord series. And this is Volume 6. I believe there's a total of seven that are coming out. Now, it's interesting for someone like me that has never seen a single episode of... Overlord, nor has read any of the manga, and I really want to because I think the character design of the uh, character here is awesome. So I was a little confused at first, but you know, it, it's I've been reading manga for 30 years. It's it's easy for me to get a hold of, okay, what exactly is going on and who some of these characters are. I'm still a little lost as to if these any of these characters act in the same way in the main manga that they do here i can't imagine that uh this book retails again for 13 dollars has 160 pages and this is what the artwork looks like in there so it is the main creator writing these stories it's just two different artists that are working on the book as you're taking a gander at these spines and analyzing don't forget to hit the like button please subscribe consider supporting us on patreon and spread shop Next up is Slasher Maidens, and I'll be holding up all the spines here in a second. But, so, this is Volume 2 of that series. And this one here is definitely mature content, um, because it features just graphic violence and some uh, sexual content. Uh, for those that are wondering about those kind of stories, this is, this is the one. So, it continues the story of Asuma who is tried to infiltrate the school and because he was chasing this girl, he's a pervert. So he's collecting panties and he chased this girl into a school, but the school, this, uh, what is it? The Mado girls Academy turns out to be a front for a bunch of, uh, assassins, a bunch of Kaijin hunters. And the Kaijin are these monsters that appear when people succumb to their weaknesses, to their desires. So there's a lot of that in here. What I really enjoyed about this one, and this one again, I did not read volume one. I was not lost at all. What I enjoyed the most about this, though, is the freaking artwork. And let me just show you what some of the... I really enjoyed the panel-to-panel -panel layout when it came to action sequences. Whenever they're fighting these giant monsters, oh, it's so badass. So this is one that I recommend to anybody that liked things like High School of the Dead, or any of the old great artwork. I don't know if you're familiar with the manga Ka. That's what this artwork really reminds me of. But yeah, if you like things like High School of the Dead, Battle Royale, things like that, this is this is for you. Uh, this one retails for $13 and has 208 pages collected in here. And this is the type of artwork that you'll be seeing within these pages. Next up is Love of Kill. So this one is pretty interesting. It's about two assassins, one who's more of a serial killer slash assassin, and that guy's name is Ryan Ha Song. So he's never missed a kill. He's an assassin for hired, and he runs into this lady right here, Chateau Dankworth, and he falls in love with her. So this is the first time for him to be falling in love as an assassin uh, with somebody that kind of does the same job he has. They've sent 20 different assassins after him and nobody was able to do anything about him. So they are now sending Ch Chateau to go and finish the job. However, 
that doesn't work out because he he has fallen for her. So he makes her a deal about asking her out. Uh, he's killing off assassins that are trying to go after her. And this one kind of tricked me because, and this one probably is older teen, because it starts off kind of cutesy, you know, flirtation. I didn't realize how violent this would be until you get into the later pages because he is kind of a ruthless assassin. There is a lot of brutality within these pages. Um, so just be prepared for something like that, despite of how cute you may think he looks. You know, he's got this cute little fox-like face, so you kind of lured into a state of false security. But he is kind of a badass, and there's a reason why he is the best at his job. See what I mean? He's just flirting with her. But he's kind of a psycho. And, I don't know, it kind of works. Uh, after each of the chapters are these comical little inserts in between chapters from the creator, Fe. I just assume uh, they go by Fe, and they have really nothing to do or add anything to do with the story. Uh, they're just little comedy, comedic breaks, but they are collected sometimes in between some chapters. Now, the book retails for $13 and has 160 pages. It does continue. It does. It's not an all-in-one. This is just a volume one. Not sure how many more volumes there will be of this series. The Girl Without a Face. If you want to break from the norm, this is the book for you. I don't know what I, why I love this book as much as I ended up loving it. Because it's easy to read. It's a fast read. And yes, it is The Girl Without a Face. It is written and drawn by Taron Taron. Um, I assume that's how you say it. Here's the table of contents, how it's all broken up. But this is just an all-in-one. So, here we have the character... Uh, the main characters. So you have this guy that's dating this girl. And she's cute. She has no face. So each chapter starts off with, uh, I don't want to brag or anything, but I got a girlfriend. The thing is, she has no face. Each one of the chapters start like that. And each of the chapters is about six, about six uh, pages long or so. And there's also miscommunication because she's a quiet person. It's really hard to read what she's thinking. Sometimes when she's mad, sometimes when she's flirty, sometimes when she's sad, things like that. You get the gist. Um, I don't know. I found this really wholesome because the more you read about it, the more you, you, fi you find out that it's not just a guy dating a girl without a face. You get to see the world a little more and more. Like there's little, little hints at it towards the beginning, but... Yeah, he's not dating an average girl. He's not dating somebody that lives in his neighborhood. He's actually dating a yokai. So, it's a little uh, demon spirit. Because that's what you find out later on. That through the chapters that there are... He's living in the yokai world. Now, they're not kids. He has a job. And she's kind of a stay-at-home girlfriend. But this is pretty much it. This is exactly what you get out of this particular volume. And um, this all has 192 pages. Retails for $15 because this one here is a little bit bigger than most of the Tonkaban shown in this particular video. But yes, this is the girl without a face. All in one, cute, wholesome, <laughs> definitely a breath of fresh air. If you're interested in any of these books, don't forget to check out our sponsor. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content and page count of each of these books. Let us know in the comments down below which ones you are currently reading. If you're interested in picking any up. And please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Thank you to all the Minties for your support. And don't forget, stay Minty! Stay Minty!